Someone who's chosen by God for some important task may go through difficult times. He may become depressed if people don't listen to him. He may become arrogant. He may even rebel against God. But it would be odd for a person to receive revelations from God that have a corrupting influence on him, revelations that make him a worse person. How is this relevant to our evaluation of Paul and Muhammad? Let's find out. Paul and Muhammad went through some profound changes during their lifetimes, but they eventually settled into their final views on various topics. We can get to the hearts of their culminating ethical positions by asking each of them a simple question. As far as ethics is concerned, what's the greatest thing in the world? We have Paul's answer in 1 Corinthians 13, where he writes, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. According to Paul, what's the greatest thing you can do? Love. Now for Muhammad's answer to the question, what's the greatest thing in the world? Sahih al-Bukhari, 2795, the Prophet said, nobody who dies and finds good from Allah in the hereafter would wish to come back to this world even if he were given the whole world and whatever is in it, except the martyr, who, on seeing the superiority of martyrdom, would like to come back to the world and get killed again in Allah's cause. The only thing that would be worth coming back to this world for, after seeing paradise, is getting killed while waging jihad. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2796, the Prophet said, a single endeavor of fighting in Allah's cause in the afternoon or in the forenoon is better than all the world and whatever is in it. A single attack by a jihadi is better than the entire world and everything in it. And we wonder why Muslim mothers send their kids off to join terrorist groups. They're just doing what's best for their children, according to Muhammad. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2797. Muhammad said, By him in whose hands my soul is, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause, and then come back to life, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred, and then come back to life again, and then get martyred. According to Muhammad, what's the greatest thing you can do? Die while slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. In John 10, verse 10, Jesus says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. If the forces of evil come to steal and kill and destroy, and the pinnacle of Muhammad's hierarchy of good deeds is getting killed while slaughtering people, but Jesus came so that people would have life to the full, and the pinnacle of Paul's hierarchy of good deeds is loving people, Whose ethical system would Jesus affirm, Paul's or Muhammad's? 
whose ethical system would Jesus condemn? If you Muslims know that Jesus would condemn Muhammad, why do you keep telling us that you respect Jesus? Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In case you stumbled upon this video while browsing or searching, I wanted to let you know that it's part of a series comparing Paul and Muhammad. So if you'd like to see the full series, be sure to click on the playlist. If you're already in the playlist, you're about to see that while Paul won converts through peaceful preaching, Muhammad won converts primarily through bribes and threats.